Hi, 3D gurus. This is Alan from Digital Vector Studios again. And I was getting into this uh, this new popcorn effects plugin, and I wanted to dig in a little bit deeper on some of the settings of this plugin. And so let's get started. I think first of all, we're going to load up the uh, the mesh setting here. So go to emitter settings and the uh, distribution of mesh. Pull that onto your desktop. And so what it's going to do, it's going to give you kind of a, a mesh with a, a volumetric uh, shape here, a sphere. And so if we go up to settings, uh, we can see there's all kinds of different things that we can change here. And you can see there's a particle settings, there's the, the actual mesh there. And so let's get into some of these particle settings. You can see there's a, a brightness slider here and that's going to turn up the intensity of the light coming off of these particles. That's, that's kind of nice. And so if we get into, we can look at some of the, go back to this, go to the uh, force, you can see there's gravity that's being applied, wind that can be applied. Uh, turbulence. So let's turn up the wind force a little bit. Take a look at that. Try that one more time. Turn up the wind force. You can see those particles are now moving a little bit more with the wind movement. Zoom into that a little bit. So now let's take a look at, we'll turn up wind and we'll turn up the turbulence a little bit as well. See what happens. So now we get a nice effect of, of that force on those particles. You can see what would happen. So let's take a look at a few more of these. So can change the force of the wind, which direction it's coming from. Okay, I think I turned that up too much. Let's try that again. Put it back. Because this will animate as you place things in the different timelines, so you got to make sure you're starting it where you want to. So we can see that's going to be moving things horizontally. Let's move it the other direction as you can see the difference. Very nice. That's kind of moving away from us actually. Move it back in the timeline here. Let's move our X. There we go. Very nice. Move it the other way. We'll move this back. Move the Z. There we go. Have it falling. And let's move it. Go back to the timeline. Move it the other way. Have it going up. Very nice. These things are doing exactly what I ex expect to see. So it's very intuitive here with these controls. Very nice. Let's get these, some of these back here. Back to zero. You can hand enter those if you need to. Let's look at the basic attributes here. So there's life, global scale. Let's change the life setting up a little bit. And I did that in the timeline, so let's do that again here. Type it in to 10. You know, a little bit different life. You can see some of that animation. I had some of those animation points in there. So we're getting a lot more particles that are staying for a longer period of time with this setting. Back to the start. Change these again. As I hit undo, 10 here. We'll go life cycle max 20. There we go. 
you can see that animation. I didn't change some of those before, but that's kind of neat. We can see how that those different points along the timeline are going to affect our, our particles. Very nice. Okay, we'll get some of these back to the original settings here. So we can change some other items here. Okay, let's go to the distortion intensity. So this is going to give it kind of a different effect with the particles. It's going to kind of blend them in, uh, distort them. And we can see under, we've got under this tab, we've got all the colors that are going to be applied through the different phases of these particles. So we can change them. There's also a randomness. Uh, we can have a start and end color, opacity, end width, and height. There's a lot of different settings we can place here. Here I've changed some of the colors, so you can see some of the differences. There's a lot we can do here uh, to get your desired result. Very nice. Okay, I can <clears throat> I can picture that we would do a, a sun or some kind of other outer space effects with this, and you can see the randomness here. The R, G, B values, each one first R, G, and then B. You can change the randomness there. And obviously I animated that. I didn't do it from the start. Let's do that one more time from the start. R, G, B. Just give it some randomness. And now we're going to be able to see, and before it was just all blue, now we're seeing some difference in the color of these particles as it phases through these cycles. For emitting. That's kind of what I'd expect it to do, and so that's very nice. And there's some size of randomness. You can change the size of the particles. Rotation, force, back to that. We've still got the wind applied. Turbulence. Physics, so there's collisions, and we can make them disappear, or we can have them stay. So we're just getting more particles, and you can see the randomness of the size uh, that these things are all being applied. And I, I'm running a uh, GTX 960 card on a laptop, so it's it's a not a real fast i7 and it's having no trouble keeping up with all these particles so no issues at all so let's take a look at here's soft distance exposure bloom this is going to just really give it uh, a lot of it different exposure and so you're going to see that that brightness it takes away the sharpness though of these particles it's going to kind of blend them in as, as more of a pure light kind of overexposed look and you can change the strength of that there's a soft distance so these are kind of camera settings here's all of our meshes and each of those can be changed of those particles so the new change with this uh, this popcorn system over the old system is you can have different mesh particles a uh, number of different particles before it was limited to a single type of particle in the old system so let's make some more changes here and I just have a background here I didn't explain that before with just a, a primitive object in the scene so you can see what's happening uh, let's get some more yellows and reds here with this instead of the blues. There we go. Take a look at that so you can see the color differences. And we still have blue as our standard mesh color, so we're still getting that blue. And the reds and yellows are, are just blending in with that blue color. And I still have the overexposed um, setting on here so there's a lot we can do customization and obviously you can change completely this mesh shape uh, right now it's a sphere 
but you could change it to whatever shape that you want to change it to as well with your mesh. So there's there's a lot this plugin can do. So those are just some of the additional settings for you guys to take a look at. And I'm sure if if you've already picked it up, you're already going through these, but you haven't. If you haven't picked it up, just wanted to show you some of these things so you can make your decision on purchase and see some of the things that it can do with your projects. Thanks a lot for taking a look. Take care.